This time out, we profile a true gentleman and a football legend. Number five on our list of icons, old 98, Michigan's Tom Harmon. Michigan football. Those two words alone conjure images of excellence and tradition. The winged helmet. The big house. Hail to the victors. And there he goes! Charles Woodson down the sideline! He's gonna go all the way! Over the past 125 years, the Wolverines have minted scores of All-Americans. Yet one student athlete remains the gold standard in Ann Arbor. Old 98, Tom Harmon. When you talk about Tom Harmon, this guy was like Sir Galahad. Tom Harmon, in my opinion, is one of the foundations on which the tradition of Michigan football was built. There really was, in that era, no position on the field that Tom Harmon could not have played. He was the Magic Johnson of college football. The legend of Tom Harmon began not in Michigan, but a few hundred miles to the south. Tom Harmon, he was born in a little town in Rensselaer, Indiana, but moved to Gary at a young age. He came from a very athletic family. Two of his brothers played uh, at Purdue. Uh, another brother went to Tulane. Went to high school at Horace Mann, which was a powerhouse athletic school, but his coach there was Doug Kerr, who played for Michigan. During the mid-1930s, Harmon's blend of athletic talents made him one of the most decorated athletes the state of Indiana had ever witnessed. A multi-letter athlete, basketball, baseball, we threw three no-hitters. He was a 100-meter uh, track champion. He was a national figure in high school. Even. He was a national scoring champion in his senior year as a high school quarterback. And he was the top recruit probably of the day. As a senior in 1937, universities throughout the country courted Harmon, who would eventually narrow his suitors down to two Big Ten universities. Purdue was, you know, just down the road, a natural place for him to go, so it came down to Purdue and Michigan. I think the connection with Coach Kerr uh, and Michigan was a key to getting him to Ann Arbor. He did want to become a broadcaster, and at the time, they had that opportunity, you know, uh, for his education, for Harmon to take at Michigan, and I think that was a compelling reason for him. Tom Harmon would become a Michigan man, and upon his arrival in Ann Arbor in the fall of 1937, was challenged to live up to his hype. There's stories of when he showed up for practice, some of his other teammates were, if not skeptical, they were curious. They just wanted to see how good this Harmon kid was. My first impression was he, he's not that good as a football player. As I looked at Tom, I just thought that you're not the answer to an All-American halfback, young man, and uh, I'm anxious to play against you. And I think that most of the fellows looked at Tom and felt the same way, but uh, we were soon to be amazed at the power that Tom had from his hips down. And of course, this was, this was Tom's strength as a running halfback, with, with the great legs that he had and as a power runner and also as a speedster. He could run over people, he could run around people. He could run through people. He was Bo Jackson before Bo Jackson, except he could throw the ball and he could catch it and he could play safety. I mean, what else can you say? The guy had everything. Following his freshman year, Michigan made a coaching change. Fritz Chrysler was the new head man in Ann Arbor. Fritz Chrysler was brought in as the new coach. He had a very complicated offense for the time, ran this single wing and was a very stern, by-the-books, hard-nosed coach. Harmon's multifaceted skill set was the perfect fit for Fritz Chrysler's schemes. He played quarterback, he played tailback, he played D-back, he can jump up and play linebacker, he could have played the line, he's just big enough to do that. He was a hell of a kicker. Name a position, he did not play, there is not one. Chrysler's single wing certainly fit Harmon well because what they could do is put the ball in his hands. He was a star on the freshman team, and there was anticipation when he was going to start. 